Welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl susan here back with another amazing video if you're new here welcome my name is susan and i create videos on faith lifestyle dance and fashion and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much and let's get right into this video so in today's video you guys we are having a bible study i'm so excited like this is gonna be like a bible study series yeah so i'm gonna be doing bible studies in different topics in the bible and if you guys find them interesting if you guys feel like you're learning something then please be sure to let me know in the comments and also let me know what topics you'd want me to discuss and yeah we can learn together and grow in our knowledge of the bible today's video i'm focusing on genesis 6 so if you guys don't know about this story it's very interesting churches don't preach about this it's not a very popular topic but the bible is truth and if we want to grow in our knowledge of god we have to get to know the truth so i have my bible here with me and this is the king james version bible so i prefer to use this version of the bible because i feel like it's the most accurate one and yeah if you guys have other versions of course you can use them there's no issue with that but for me i prefer to use this one because i feel like it's just the most accurate get your bibles follow me along and let's read together genesis 6 verse 1 to 12 and i read from the king james bible and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that i have made them but noah found grace in the eyes of the lord these are the generations of noah noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and noah walked with god and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So Genesis 6 verse 1 here, we can see that human beings begin to multiply on the earth. Verse 2, we see that the sons of God saw that these daughters of men were very beautiful. And they took them wives of all which they so chose. who are the sons of God, right? Let's try to understand what they mean by sons of God. So open with me to the book of Job 1 verse 6. We're going to try to see who these sons of God are. Job 1 verse 6, and I read now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan also came among them and this seems to be like angelic beings that came to meet with god god summoned them and even satan was there as we are told in this verse and let's also read job 38 verse 7 when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of god shouted for joy interesting and then we also have daniel 3 verse 25 he answered and said lo i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of god so this is obviously the incident of uh, daniel and his three friends who were thrown into the fire and here we can see the soldier who the king asked to check on the three boys if they were burning went to the king and told him that he could see that the three boys were not burnt they were not having any pain or being hurt by the fire and he also saw a fourth person who he says appeared like a son of god so son of god here translated in the hebrew text is actually a reference to an angel that the man had supposedly seen who was with shadrach meshach and abednego so here again in this verse in this chapter of daniel we see that the son of god reference here means an angel and then we can also read from 
job 2 verse 1 and it reads again there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan came also among them to present himself before the lord so again we see here the sons of god came to present themselves before god and also satan was there so obviously these sons of god are a form type of angelic beings they are angels then the last verse we can read psalm 89 verse 6 it reads for who in the heaven can be compared unto the lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the lord so here again we see the verse is talking about the sons of god here it says the sons of the mighty who can compare to god obviously trying to reference to some form of angelic beings angelic powers angelic spirits and obviously the term sons of god here means angels okay so now that that is clear let's go on and move on to the next chapter because um, a lot of uh, people or other churches have tried to deny that the sons of god means the angels but the bible itself does give a true definition of what it meant by sons of god okay so these sons of god were not human beings these sons of god were not a nation of other people these sons of god were angels and the bible has made it very clear that these were angelic beings that came and admired these daughters of men and saw that they were beautiful and so these angelic beings came and they had children with these women so these sons of god are angels or fallen angels because as we read on in genesis chapter 6 if we go to read further down in genesis chapter 6 verse 2 if we read on we see that these sons of god saw that these daughters of men were fair they were beautiful so they took them and made them wives and they had children with these women they had children with these human women and so someone can ask like how can an angel have a child how can angels reproduce because uh the bible is clear that angels cannot reproduce angels cannot uh, procreate right and you are very correct angels cannot reproduce but um one thing i want you guys to keep in mind is that these angels they transformed themselves into human beings they looked like human beings whereby they were able to seduce these women and these women ended up having children with them so again i'm going to use bible verses to defend my theory of that angels can transform into human beings or anything else that they want to appear as we can read from um genesis 19 verse 1 to 5 and there came two angels to sodom at even and lot sat in the gate of sodom and lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and he said behold now my lords turn in i pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways and they said nay but we will abide in the street all night three and he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake and live and bread and they did eat but before they lay down the men of the city even the men of sodom compassed the house round both old and young all the people from every quarter and they called unto lord and said unto him where are the men which came in to thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them so if you see specifically in verse in chapter 19 verse 5 it refers to these two angels as men right and they appear to the men of sodom and gomorrah as human beings as men so my point here is that angels can transform they can shape shift they can appear as human beings okay another verse is genesis 18 verse 2 this is abraham it says and he lift up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet he, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground so here again we see three angels appear to abraham right but they their appearance was that of human beings their appearance was that of human men so again we see another incident here where the angels transformed themselves they appeared in the form of a human being in the form of a man okay so what is my point here my point is that angels can shape shift they have that ability they have that power okay um we can also read second corinthians 11 verse 14 and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light okay so the bible here clearly tells us that satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light he can disguise himself into an angel of light so in other words it says he can transform he can make himself into anything that he wants to be he can appear as a human being he can appear as an old man he can appear as light when in fact he is darkness okay so the bible has clearly told us that angels have the power to transform themselves to shape shift so 
now that that is clear let's move on some other verses in the bible that also support the theory that these sons of god were fallen angels is in second peter 2 verse 4 so we can open there and read second peter 2 verse 4 i know i have got a lot of scriptures but um i'm just trying to prove to you guys that what i'm telling you are facts okay before you come at me and say i'm teaching stuff that is not true the bible the scriptures are here so we're going to read them and understand what the bible is telling us so second peter 2 verse 4 second peter 2 verse 4 says for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment okay so here we see in second peter he's talking about god not sparing the angels that sinned but he cast them down to hell in chains of darkness so what does it mean it means obviously there was a group of angels that rebelled and fell right and god chained them and cast them into chains of darkness until the day of judgment the day of the end of the world so this is some proof to say that the sons of god were fallen angels and they did leave heaven to come to earth and have children with human women this is one verse that supports that theory another one is jude 6 and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day so this is another verse in bible that tells us that the sons of god were fallen angels they are angels that fell from heaven and they came to earth you know that of course there was a group of them uh, one third of them that fell with lucifer and rebelled with lucifer and then there's also another group that actually came and had children with human women the group uh, known as the sons of god that genesis 6 talks about okay so the bible has a lot of mystery you really have to understand it in depth to understand these things because there's hidden mysteries that can only be understood when you actually take time to study the bible okay so the sons of god were fallen angels and that is loud and clear according to the scriptures that i've given you guys and yeah i hope it's clear okay so let's move on to the next okay so genesis 6 uh, verse 3 and it says and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years verse four there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown the children that these angels had with these human women were not ordinary children we said that they were supernatural beings okay they were known as giants okay other terms call them nephilim okay nephilims so these nephilims were the result of the union between the fallen angels the sons of god and the human women okay and where does this word nephilim come from right so there's only one other verse in the bible that talks about the nephilims and it also clearly tells us that these nephilims were not ordinary men okay these nephilims were giants they were abnormal they were superhuman beings okay that were a result of the fallen angels and the human women so we're gonna read numbers 13 verse 33 okay numbers 13 verse 33 and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight okay so here this is the incidence of the days of moses okay when moses was still alive and he sent out a few men to go and spy out the land of canaan okay and they say they found what was known as the giants the sons of anak which came which come of the giants okay so they were descendants of the giants okay the sons of anak okay and we were in our on site as grasshoppers okay so they felt like grasshoppers when they saw these giants so just imagine how huge these giants were right if they felt like grasshoppers right yeah so we were in our own site as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight okay and so they were in their sight they were like grass so these nephilim in genesis 6 were a race of superhuman beings okay they were not even human beings actually they were half human beings and half something else okay they became to be known as the mighty men of old or the men of renown okay we see these movies today we watch of hercules of achilles but what if hercules was actually a nephilim what if achilles what if all these movies these superhero movies that we watch they're actually nephilim they're actually half human and half something else right like i mean all the movies we watch today all the hollywood movies this all the superhero movies that we watch today they're 
always gonna be half human being half something else from another planet one parent was not human you know like what does that tell you like these people know that these things are real but as the christians we are the ones who are sleeping we don't know that these things are real so i'm just trying to open up your eyes like to help you to understand and to see that these things actually did exist okay nephilim actually did exist and they actually still exist in our day and i'm gonna come to that a little bit later so we read on in genesis 5 and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so what does this mean okay so this means that there was no aspect of man's nature not corrupted by sin okay jesus said as the days of no aware so also will the coming of the son of man be that's in matthew 24 verse 37 in other words the conditions of the world before the coming of jesus will be like the conditions of the world before the flood so what were these conditions one exploding population okay we see that in genesis 6 is one where it talks about men began to multiply on the face of the earth okay so there was an exploding population even in our days today there's so many billions of people on this earth right uncountable so much population exploding population look at china look at india look at the world like look at how much human beings are alive today okay so exploding population What's the next condition sexual perversion okay we see that in genesis 6 verse 2 sexual perversion meaning the sex was not the normal way that god created it to be okay sex was created by god sex is of god it is not of the devil the devil just got sex and made it like that and now sex becomes like it's something that is bad like it's a taboo like people shouldn't talk about it the church has made it a taboo but when in fact god is the one who created sex it's the devil who just got it and twisted it as we know the devil cannot create anything he just tries to pervert he just tries to twist things that god creates okay so here we see sexual perversion in genesis 6 verse 2 where the sons of god these fallen angels had children with human women okay that's sexual perversion a non-human entity having a child with a human being that is obviously sexual perversion okay it's not in the natural order of how god created things to be another condition that we see is demonic activity okay in those days there was demonic activity that was rampant before the flood of noah demonic activity was rampant okay angelic beings were having children with human women that was demonic activity okay and even in today's world we see a lot of cases of demonic activity we see cases of satanism witchcraft demonic manifestations ghosts huntings possession okay all this demonic activity happening in our days just as it happened in the days of Noah. another condition that we see is constant evil in the heart of man okay as genesis 6 verse 5 said that god saw that there was wickedness in man okay and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually okay even in today's world like there are people who are just evil okay i know of course god did not create anyone evil it's the devil who comes to corrupt and destroy human beings okay and some people unfortunately have uh given themselves over to the devil okay and evil has taken over them like Look at the evil that is running rampant in our world today. People just wake up and kill people. A child wakes up, gets carries a gun to school and shoots his teacher. Uh, drug abuse, sexual abuse, like kidnappings. Even in Zambia today, kidnappings. So many youths are going missing. Like so much evil in the hearts of men. Okay, just as it was in the days of Noah. Another condition that we see is widespread corruption and violence. Okay, in Genesis 6 verse 11, it talks about the earth was also corrupt before god and the earth was filled with violence okay in those days in noah's days even in our days today there's so much violence there's so much killing evil murder there's so much corruption like in our country today just to get a job you have to know someone you have to have connections okay that is all corruption that is all evil just as it was in the days of noah so these conditions we can see uh pre-existing they are there just as it was in the days of noah even in our day today we have the same thing happening okay the six goes on to say genesis and it says and it repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that i have made them this eight genesis verse eight it says but noah found grace in the eyes of the lord okay noah found grace in the sight of god in the midst of all that evil all that confusion all that bad thing happening noah still found grace noah found favor in the sight of god okay so i'm just gonna expound on this um romans 5 verse 20 says where sin abounded grace abounded much more okay so it was true then and it is still true today okay where there's so much sin where there's so much evil the grace of god still abounded okay 
in the case of Noah, there was sin everywhere, okay? But God's grace, God's love still abounded, even in our day to day, okay? We can feel like we've fallen short of God and we've sinned so much. But remember, the scripture says, where sin abounded, grace abounded even much more, okay? So you're never too far gone. God loves you. Just come back to him and he'll accept you, okay? Genesis 6 verse 9, and it reads, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. So here the Bible says that Noah Noah was perfect in his generations right so what does this mean right so this means that Noah's blood or Noah's DNA was pure okay it was uncorrupted okay remember we said that the angels came down and they had children with the human women right so these children these offspring were corrupted they were not pure okay they were not pure human beings their dna was altered okay they were corrupted they were half human being and half something else half angelic being okay they were not fully human here when it says that noah was perfect in his generations it means that noah's dna was pure he was uncorrupted he he did not have his dna his blood mixed in with this dna of the fallen angels okay it's just clear it's common sense yeah this is why he found grace and favor in the sight of the lord of course he was a righteous man we know but this was also another reason why he found favor in god's sight because his dna was unpolluted we could say that he and his family probably were the only hundred percent human beings left in the whole world and the rest of the world had been polluted had been corrupted had had their dna changed into something else so as we go on to read down it talks about and god looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth okay so all flesh okay so what does all flesh mean okay so let's open um this corinthians 15 verse 39 and it says all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men okay so flesh of men of human beings the flesh of a human being then another flesh of beasts okay so flesh of beasts that's cattle gods sheep okay and then another of fishes okay so flesh of the fish the uh the fish of the ocean okay and then there's um flesh of birds okay another of birds okay so here they mention four kinds of flesh the flesh of man flesh of beasts uh flesh of fishes and flesh of birds okay so when we come back here to genesis 6 verse 12 it says and god looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth okay so what does this mean what does it mean when it says all flesh corrupted his way upon the earth so this means that not only did the fallen angels mix their dna with humans but they also did it with all other flesh okay so these angels they were trying to provoke god's anger right and they saw that disturbing the genetic makeup of human beings was infuriating god okay so they did that they they intermingled their dna with human beings and it gave off giants and not only did they stop at that but they also went on further and mixed their flesh their dna with the dna of other flesh of other animals and here we see other flesh all flesh there's flesh of man which was the nephilim produced then there's also flesh of the beasts that's the cattle the animals flesh of the fish and also flesh of the birds these angels mixed their dna with other flesh okay and this resulted in other ungodly abominations things that we know today as mermaids as dinosaurs yes the dinosaurs were created by these fallen angels okay and i'm gonna put in a few clips for you just to see here some resemblance between these dinosaurs and some normal animals okay so it's just to show that they're probably getting different kind of animals and mixing them together with their dna this angel dna to make these creatures known as dinosaurs as mermaids as uh centaurs as satyrs um so many things that we do not even know exist today right just think about it if the dinosaurs were created by god why did they not survive why are they not dinosaurs today if they were created by god then was it going to be possible for them to enter into noah's ark seeing how gigantic they were was it going to be possible no because they were going to crush the ark and noah and all the other animals his family were all going to die and no one was going to survive the flood okay so god saw that these things were abomination and he had to have them killed off in the flood yeah these angels were pretty bad news you guys like they really tried to piss god off they mixed their dna with human beings they also mixed they played around with the animals with the fish with all other creation and they made these abominations grieved the lord and he saw that there was evil in all the face of the earth and he had to destroy that world so yeah, as we read down further on into genesis 6 verse 13 
13 to 22, it talks about God's preceding judgment of the ancient world with the historical flood that killed every living thing except Noah and his family. See, God sent the flood and it rained, it rained, it rained for like, I think five months or so. And all these uh, creatures died, okay, except creatures that entered into the ark of noah another point i want to raise with you is that these nephilims did survive Remember i talked about that we still have the nephilim today yes they just hide they're not seen okay but they are there and i'm going to show you how they survived okay so you can turn with me to genesis 7 okay genesis 7 verse 21 to 22 it says um and all flesh died that moved upon the earth both of the fowl that's the birds and of the cattle and of the beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died okay so here we see that after the flood everything all these creatures okay all these that breath the breath of life they all died okay but how did the nephilim survive okay so remember in uh first corinthians 15 i talked about there's four different kinds of flesh right the flesh of human beings the flesh of the beasts of the earth the flesh of the fish and the flesh of the birds now if you read carefully in genesis 7 verse 21 to 22 it talks about all flesh died that moved upon the earth both the fowl the cattle, the beast, creeping thing, everything that breathed the breath of life, okay? Or in or or in whose nostrils was the breath of life, everything that was on the dry land died. So we see everything that was on the dry land, everything whose nostrils had the breath of life, okay? So haven't you picked up that something is missing yes the flesh of the fish the fish the fish here is not mentioned okay so this means that the fish because obviously a fish does not breathe air it's, it's it lives in water right so it can be able to survive under the water right so obviously these fish did not die okay these nephilims that were resulted from fish and angel dna did not die okay because they lived in the water okay so how did this nephilim survive they probably used these fishes to go under the water okay so yeah they went under the water and at the base of the ocean or probably went in the sky in the air okay that's how we see a lot of demonic activity today is either involvement with water the ocean the sea or in the sky in the air we know the bible talks about principalities and powers of the air we are not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers in the air okay so what are these powers in the air these are obviously the demons okay the fallen angels these uh nephilims that survived okay these demons that survived if we look at um deuteronomy 2 verse 20 it just goes to show you how like these nephilim still kept on showing up in the bible right that also was accounted a land of giants giants dwelt there in in old times and the ammonites caught them zamzumims okay so here we see the bible mentions that there was a land of giants so you see like there were giants here how did they survive right yeah and then another incident we can see in deuteronomy 2 verse 10 it also says the emims dwelt there in, in times past a people great and many and tall okay as the anakim so here we see again another reference is made to giants because it says what they were great and there were many and they were what tall okay so these were not ordinary people they were obviously giants and then we also see in deuteronomy 3 verse 11 it talks about the king of bashan king og okay for only og king of bashan remained of the remnant of the giants remnant okay so what does remnant mean it's a leftover right so the leftovers of the giants after the flood okay leftover from what from the flood of noah okay so only Og king of Bashan remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in rubber of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. So it's going on to talk about the bed of this king of Bashan, okay, King Og, that his bed was a bed of iron, okay? Now that's a bit abnormal, like who sleeps on a bed made of iron, right? Meaning that probably if they made it out of wood, he was obviously going to break it because he was too big, right, or too strong. They had to make something that was going to sustain him. So his bed was of iron, and you can see it says it was nine cubits, which was the length of it, and four cubits was the bread. So it was very wide and very long. So we can only imagine how tall he was, right? And I just inserted a picture there just so you can see like 
it shows the normal feet of an average man that's six feet then we can see the rest of the other feet are abnormal these are giants okay so there's one that shows king og of basha and then it also shows goliath then it shows other giants and this is actually actually in history right like they actually found these skulls these skeletons these bones they were actually found and they documented but they didn't publish and release it in the world because why it's going to discount the evolution theory right the bible is going to be proven to be true and all this evolution talk of the big bang theory and evolving from apes is going to be found to be false they know the truth and they're trying to cover it up and it's sad that the christians and the people of the bible don't really know the truth about it but the people in the world know the truth and they're trying to hide it so it's high time for us to wake up and to start to see the hidden mysteries of the bible like read your bible guys there's so much treasure in it like there's so much interesting stuff in it so yeah that's how this nephilim survived you can see like it goes on to talk about them even in joshua 11 21 it talks about and at that time came joshua and cut off the Anakims from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debar, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. 22. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, right? Gaza is what? Philistine. In Gath, that's also Philistine, and in Ashdod, there remained. So you can see, like, Joshua was obviously he, he succeeded moses right? moses joshua they all had the same command from god they were taught to wipe out these people right because why god knew that these were not human beings these were giants right these were nephilim so they had this charge and joshua took over from moses he was completing like annihilating and killing them and he managed to do that except in cities of gath and gaza and gaza is what that's in philistine right so we can see that these giants they still survived so if you are looking for traces of giants right or if you are looking for the leftover remnant a good place for you to start searching is in philistine okay because there is evidence in the bible that suggests that Probably there are still giants there today okay there's actually a video link i'm gonna put it down you can watch it after this video uh it's just a one minute video that talks about um there's this soldier who has been interviewed by this guy called ale mazuli he also like teaches bible studies on this kind of stuff nephilim he was interviewing this guy this soldier and he was talking about the soldier was talking about like how that was in afghanistan how the locals would say that there were giants in that land and they would live in the mountains and that they ate people you can only imagine the evil that was in the days of noah like not only was the earth evil and corrupt there was also cannibalism because obviously these giants couldn't just be sustained by normal food that we eat they obviously started eating the human beings because they couldn't be sustained they couldn't be satisfied by the normal food right so imagine the evil that was there in those days so you can just check out that video it talks about a lot interesting stuff like you guys just check it out and read the bible and compare okay what is the essence of genesis 6 if you read in genesis chapter 5 it talks about the generations of adam right like the bloodline of adam from adam then he had his son seth and seth went on to have other children who went on to have enoch then lamech and finally unto noah and then you know all this generation so if you read genesis 5 it shows that there's a generation human beings are multiplying right now what's the point of genesis 6 what is the essence of it it describes a desperate attempt on the part of satan to attack the godly remnant that is named in genesis 5 so genesis 6 is basically showing you how the devil lucifer tries to destroy god's remnant try to destroy the image of god who is the image of god it's us human beings right the bible says god made us in his image okay genesis 6 is basically showing us how the devil tries to corrupt human beings by doing what sending his fallen angels to come and have children with human women and thereby polluting their dna contaminating their dna and giving birth to giants giving birth to nephilim we just see in genesis 6 how the devil tried to corrupt the image of god how the devil tries to corrupt man and distort our dna so just imagine like how evil does that get right so that is why in the gospel of matthew in the first chapter it begins with a mention of jesus's generation okay it shows the bloodline of jesus to basically show and prove that jesus was from a pure uncorrupted fully human bloodline so we see in matthew in the new testament the first book of the new testament matthew chapter one it shows what jesus is bloodline jesus is genealogy right why do you think that's there obviously yeah is to prove that jesus is from the line of king david but it's also to show that jesus his dna his blood was pure okay it was untainted it was uncorrupted it was unpolluted by this agenda of the devil so that's why that is there in matthew 1 just so you know just in case you didn't know cool right yeah how does genesis 6 apply to the world today
in Ecclesiastes it says what there is nothing new under the sun everything repeats itself. so these Nephilim trust me and believe me that they are still there they still exist we don't know where they are hiding but they are there the devil has a very very sinister agenda for human beings whereby he is still trying to corrupt and pollute the image of God he is trying to distort the image of God he's trying to corrupt the DNA so you can look up uh, what is known as transhumanism I'm not going to go much into it but just look it up transhumanism it's uh, basically them trying to make human beings evolve make man evolve right to make us live forever to make us enhanced it's basically them trying to enhance human beings to make us not fully human but half human and half supernatural or half something else half with an ability an abnormal ability to heal to live longer to procreate okay just look it up and see how it's not so much far-fetched from what i've been talking about of how they are trying to corrupt the dna and the human beings okay look up transhumanism and CERN and see how the devil is working okay and christians we need to wake up okay the bible says put on the full armor of god okay the full armor also consists of also you having knowledge of the tactics of the devil the bible says be wise as serpents okay you need to know the plans of the devil so that when these things start happening believe me they are already happening when these things begin to be so evident you are not taken aback you are not lost okay because there'll be a strong delusion that will come in the earth and most of god's chosen people are going to believe that delusion they're going to believe that lie so you have to be awake pray have a strong prayer life get into your bible read the bible and find out these truths and be alert okay so that the devil cannot take you unawares because trust me these things are happening and they're going to continue happening until jesus comes back things that you hear of as ufos aliens all these are just demons they all have a sinister agenda they are all working to bring about the coming of the new world order and the end of the world and they're trying to corrupt humanity as we speak there is actually places where they're actually performing experiments on human beings and mixing their these things are actually happening and you have to be alert okay so what is my essence of having this bible study with you it's just for me to help you guys to see that the bible is real there's so much historical information even science can actually back up the bible and say that the bible is true okay and to show you that these things as in the days of noah even in our days they are happening believe me or not these things are happening like there's so much demonic activity going on have you ever heard of people who say they've been abducted by aliens where do you think they go to what do you think those aliens or those demons are doing to them they're obviously getting their dna and mixing it with god knows what okay and making abominations that only god knows the point of this bible study is for you guys to have your eyes open i just hope like you guys have an open mind like you're actually willing to listen to what i'm saying okay and study it for yourself okay it's there in the bible it's not from me it's the bible so read your bibles have an open mind and get to know the truths the mysteries of the bible because trust me you'll be amazed at what you discover and also for you to be awake and be alert okay the devil is trying so hard to dilute christianity to make the bible seem false okay he's trying to discredit the bible imagine removing prayer from schools targeting the youth the young ones why because he knows when you have the youth you have the whole nations you have the whole world he's trying to distract us from knowing god from the bible from christianity and focusing on entertainment and focusing on things that are going to waste our time are not going to help us seek people god. can be watching netflix binge watching netflix for the whole day but fail to read their bible for five minutes fail to pray for five minutes you know so it's not normal like you have to wake up and see all these things what they are and really make a conscious decision to serve god and to resist the devil as much as you can okay so i really hope this video has opened your eyes okay i know it's a lot to take in but just have an open mind and be willing to learn okay so the bible is a treasure box and its mysteries are only available to those who are willing to open it study it really study it and learn those mysteries i really hope you guys have enjoyed this video please leave a comment let me know what you think leave a like if you enjoyed this video okay and also let me know if you'd like me to do other bible topics and yeah we can really enjoy this bible study series don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video okay i'll see you in my next video until then it's bye from you i love you guys bye I don't I don't know how we got here, but I wouldn't be going through the phases, baby.